Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's January 6, 2023. It's the first trading week of the year. This week got about 19 minutes left in it. And uh, hey, we've got a rally on our hands. Getting everybody to ask the question, more bull in 2023 or prepare for the bear? Let's get right into it here on this weekend's update. So uh, finally, some trade action today. I mean, this entire week has been, well, it's been a sloptastic mess. I'm actually going to start with a 30-minute, one hour on the S&Ps. And when I talk about a, a sloptastic volatility fun fest, I mean, we're just trapped like a rat in a cage between 3,800 and 3,900. This is the first time we've actually, you know, popped the head above really 3,900 for any period of time. And I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes, how absolutely critical that particular range is. It's a very binary range. It's this, this 3,800, 3,900. It's been a roller coaster ride. But before I get there... Let's start to actually just break down trade in general. There is one thing that I really need to emphasize, and it's it's kind of difficult as a trader sometimes to put in terms, you know, some of the activity that you see in the marketplace, but trade all throughout the course of this week. And when I say trade, I'm talking about intraday trade. You know, it doesn't matter really what you do, whether you want to sell premium, put on an in-out spread, any out-of-the-money spreads, whatever you're doing. If you've watched trade on an intraday level, You'll notice trade is, it's just downright sketchy out there. Every word from the Fed, you know, we're up, you know, 20 handles, down 20 handles. But trade, it's been really fast. It, it feels broken, disconnected. Again, the only terminology I can come up with is it's just downright sketchy out there. And it's just volatility in the beginning of the year. However, there's definitely an element of change in the air. And, you know, you can't, maybe quite put your finger on it yet, but you can feel like this marketplace, oh, we are ready to move. And of course, you know, that question is, well, we're going to have that bullish move because we just broke to the upside today, or we're going to turn around and uh, have to prepare for the bear. And again, I'm going to try to, well, relinquish some of that here on uh, on this weekend's update. So the S&P is right now are up some 95 handles. Trade, you know, throughout the course of today has uh, after some of the sketchiness, it's been rather mundane. We're just, you know, guided to the upside over here. And I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of this has to do with uh, with gamma. OK, so those of you that are actually like it's a short squeeze, absolutely unequivocally agree. Uh, it is a type of a short squeeze, but it has everything to do with the fact that there's just this tremendous amount of gamma risk that really we sit on top of every Friday, every expiration, especially when we start the trading session, okay, and this is exactly what we did today. We started the trading session, okay, basically flat on the entire week. I mean, this week, as I was saying, it's kind of broken, disconnected trade. We're higher, we're lower, okay, we're lower or higher. And we started today where we actually finished off, you know, last week. Again, really fast trade, but all of a sudden you start getting a gamma that kicks in and uh hey listen everybody has to hedge these days in the dynamic of the marketplace it's one of the things i was actually talking about uh on last weekend's update i was talking about like dodd frank and you know uh how market makers uh, aka dealers actually deal with risk if everybody turns around and starts to buy you can actually get these uh these short-term squeezes and that's exactly what you're seeing today is uh, a bit of a gamma squeeze if you will to the upside you can see though with uh, again just about oh, 14 minutes left in the trading session we're still coming up shy of the upside, the upside of the expected move. The upside expected move here inside of the SPX is right around 39.23. However, okay, we are very close. I mean, we're a few points away from the oh so important 39.31. Again, I'll come back to that here in just a moment. Now, before I go any further, let's talk a little bit about, well, some of the volatility this morning. I'm gonna zoom into it. First of all, we had the jobs number come out. The jobs number was actually a little bit better than expected. But, um, you know, the unemployment percent actually dropped. But if you look at like wage growth, it slowed down a little bit. Anyway, <laughs> good jobs number 
at this point this morning was actually construed as good. Imagine that. Good is being back to good. I'm, I'm more confused than you are on that particular one because usually good numbers have been very, very bad for the marketplace. But in this case, good is good. But here's the actual kicker to that. That number, okay, that number that we went through didn't actually mean a, a tremendous amount. The marketplace Okay, sustained volatility. In fact, we were actually watching the uh, the SPX. Okay, we were watching the implied volatility literally. Okay, today's basis, like today's expirations, January six. We're watching Jan six volatility. And one thing that all of the traders kind of noticed here at Theotrade is that volatility after the jobs number didn't really contract. Yes, the VIX actually went down a little bit, but the volatility didn't contract this morning. We're like, whoa, boy it actually implied that durable goods and the factory orders was going to be even more important. And uh, interestingly and ironically enough, it was. So that number came out and we absolutely exploded off of it. But here's, here's again, one of the more interesting aspects of it is if you looked at the, uh, the factory orders, durable goods, they were not good. They were not good at all in ISM uh, numbers. They were not good, and the marketplace actually exploded. So we had good news that was good for the marketplace. We had bad news that was good for the marketplace. Okay, no news is good news with Gary good news. No, it was uh, it was actually quite comical. Listen, this marketplace just had short squeeze written on it, some oversold you know, tech stocks. We exploded. Okay, here we are, up some 95 handles. And we're going to finish the week higher, albeit mildly higher, but I'll show that again in just a moment. So the jobs number and durable goods, the reason I'm bringing those up is not because good is good, bad is good. <laughs> None of that, okay? It's to be on your game that these catalysts, uh, they're still with us. You know, I was really hoping that that would be left behind in 2022, but it's not. Meaning that every major announcement that comes out, in fact, even some of the minor announcements, look at this, we're full-blown correlation. But when you start to look forward into next week, okay, it's just every economic event. Like who would have thought like durable goods was more important today, more important than, uh, than you know, non-farm payrolls. So all throughout the course of this next week too, we got Fed speak, okay? It's, it's gonna be, again, kind of a hotbed. Every single announcement, even like consumer sentiment, is likely to be able to move markets. So uh, keep your head in the game and know, you, you really have to know on a day-to-day -day basis what's uh, what's coming out. And uh, again, when I say Fed speak, yeah, I'm not joking. Uh, you've actually got Jerome Powell hitting the maiden stage on Tuesday, uh, but there's Fed speak throughout the entire week. All right. I just wanted to bring that up. And it's the only reason I really put jobs and durable goods in here. I could care less what the numbers are. I really could, I could care less what the numbers are. The, the impending risk is the fact that every time, however minute these announcements happen to be, it's literally like throwing a match into a pool of gasoline. And that's exactly what we saw today. And again, I wanted you to see how sketchy though that trade happened to be. This is all pre-market. You know, here I'm on, uh, I'm on mountain time. This is actually the market open, but this is the activity, okay? From the jobs number, fast disconnected trade. It is dangerous. And talk about fast disconnect, uh, disconnected trade. Here we're coming in 10 minutes to go to the close. We did not hit the important 39.31, which I'll discuss here again momentarily. All right, the other aspect that really resonated with me, and this one was absolutely critical, is the fact that uh, there's a huge rally back up in the bonds, huge rally in the bonds. Now, a rally in the bonds implies that rates are going lower. Let's actually go take a look at the TNX, the TNX, the 10-year. So if you look at the 10-year, okay, a precipitous drop in the 10-year. People, it's a monumental drop in the 10-year. Look at the size of that move inside of the 10-year. You want some volatility? You got some volatility. Also, the size of the trade inside of the 10-year today, okay, is phenomenal. Look how big the volume happened to be. The only time you see volume like this inside of the 10-year is predominantly during like full-blown, like horrendous moves in the market, okay, or rolls. But the volume in the 10-year, okay, it is 2 million contracts. Just to compare and contrast, the S&Ps, okay, aren't even going to hit 2 million contracts today. Bonds and notes, okay, are rocking out there. The reason I'm actually bringing this up, specifically the 10-year, uh, the if those interest rates are dropping precipitously, what's it going to do to the financials? Well, the irony is the financials actually had a big rally today. In fact, if you look at auto-expected moves, 
Auto expected moves is what the option market picks risk to be. Auto expected moves, we are outside the upper edge of the expected move. That's actually like pretty much your strongest sector. Now, of course, people are going to point out, no, no, it's the energy sector. I got you, but the energy sector is actually going to finish, uh, finish this week massively unchanged. The rally today, yeah, it's tech stocks, and tech stocks are rebounding a little bit. But really, okay, on the week, everything is brought to you by the financials. But here's the key point. It doesn't make a lot of sense. What you've actually got is the steepest yield curve that we've seen in 38 years. If you're looking at like two versus the 10, some, by the way, some people look at two versus the 10, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever does it for you. All right. I actually like to go over to Tastyworks for this, cruise over to Tastyworks, come over down to a futures, bring up small exchange. Small exchange actually has the, uh, the interest rate from the two to the 10. So the, uh, the two is actually pegged at about 4.2. The 10 is actually about 3.56. Nevertheless, okay humongous moves inside the two and the 10, but uh, we're still an incredibly, incredibly widespread between the two and the 10, which uh, implies, of course, recession. The point that I'm trying to make is if interest rates are down, that longer term interest rate is down, isn't that uh, eventually going to injure some of the financials, at least not, uh, not yet? Bottom line with this, okay? And I'm gonna throw this out very early on in this video, you gotta watch the financials. This next week, you need to watch the financials. Now, I am very aware that some of the financials, they're, we're just around okay, the corner from earnings. Okay, I got it. We're just around the corner from earnings. Nevertheless, so the first earnings are coming out literally next week. These are the products, though, to watch unequivocally. You got to start watching like the JP Morgans, the Bank of America, because it's going to set the tone. And I'm actually bringing up Bank of America because it's going to actually kick off earnings this, uh, this next week. I'm bringing it up and making it very, very apparent. It's the financials are going to set the tone for the marketplace okay, in the month of January. I know everybody's still got their head over in tech land, but tech has been decimated and you can see it rallying back up and it's a little bit of relief rally. And I'm telling you, if that's that's the short squeeze, but the marketplace and the S&Ps is being led around by the nose right here inside of the financials. So, okay, eyes on the financials, rates are actually down. The longer term rate is, uh, is down. That's the 10 years actually down, down substantially. Financials not getting rocked. Financials are actually on the bid and on a bid in a big way. I mean, just, just flying over here. Uh, nevertheless, look at this, a little pull back into the close. I like it. Now, let's get down to it. Let's actually talk about this range for a minute. So the binary, <laughs> a binary marketplace is back. For those of you that have actually been kind of tuning in, I know we have five minutes left inside of the trading session. This couldn't be more perfect to discuss this. All right. Okay, another binary range is back. For those of you, as I said a moment ago, have been around for a while, okay, we had a just hideous, what we term volatility box, okay, right back in this neighborhood here. And we just kept pinging around. And I say pinging around, I mean just that. We're just pinging around inside this volatility box. We popped to the upside, back in the vol box, exploded to the upside off of it, okay? Where are we right now? Ooh, this, this is interesting. If we actually knock down to the, 30, again, it's a 30 day, one hour. And the reason I like to use it, uh, to use this, nothing, nothing screams volatility box better than that. Okay. I mean, you're back into, and I was talking about this. It's the hurt locker. Now it's just literally pinging back and forth. Okay. Between 3,900 and 3,800. And there's one thing, and I've said this time and again, I don't care whether you're at, you know, look, oh, we're at 3916 right now. Yeah, great. That's the same thing as being at 3800, right? All you have to do is look at this and recognize, well, it doesn't really matter. We didn't hit the gravity point. The gravity point up here is 3931. We came close to it, but I'm going to tell you right now, okay? Yeah, that ain't done. And we're actually seeing some sell side activity with 3 minutes to go. So, a little bit more sell side, whatever. It doesn't matter whether we're at 3900 or at 3,800, and I am going to hammer this because what you are in right now is a very okay short-term vol box that actually started basically back in the uh, the neighborhood of about uh, 12, 15. So you're about three weeks into this really very, very rapid and tight channel. Okay, so why do I take issue with it? I'm going to tell you exactly why I take issue with it. Right, when you're in a channel this tight. And you start accumulating, again, open interest. And that is, you know, options start trading in here. What basically happens is the open interest just continues to grow and to grow. And you're in this box. And what do you think is going to happen when we actually do break range? All right. That's why I call it binary ranges back. 
we break the range, we're going to explode higher, explode lower. Okay. That's why I said more bull. Okay. Or prepare for the bear. The answer is, oh yeah, like it's on right now. This is as dangerous as it gets. You're in the beginning of the year. You got volatility. Do you realize you're in a hundred point range from 3,800 to 3,900? You're in a hundred point range with a VIX at 21. You're like, I don't even know what that means. Like, listen, I don't care if the VIX contracted today. It's still north of 20. You got like a north of 20 VIX and we can't get out of a hundred point range, but wait, time out. You moved a hundred handles today and you still cannot get out of your own way. That's what makes it dangerous, right? And I think people get a little bit of a feeling for this, like, oh, okay, I kind of get what he's saying. So when I say it's a binary range, what that comes down to, careful with your allocations. Binary basically implies coin flip. I, I, I hate to come on to like a weekend update, you know, and be like, hey, by the way, you're a coin flip away from exploding higher, okay, or getting taken apart to the downside. So yeah, be careful with your allocation. Listen, you better be honest with yourself, okay? There's no MACDs, no Fibonacci's, not even a Bollinger Band in here. No one cares because order flow is going to dictate how this binary range ends. That's it. You know, one of these days, one of these days, you're going to come right up here to this 3931. We get just a hair north of it. We're going to explode off of it, just explode higher. Conversely, okay, you come down here at about 3,800. Oh, we got close right down here at the 30, okay, that 3,788. I mean, that was some heavy, heavy trade. All happened inside of one day. We got lucky and rebounded back to it. And the exact same thing today. Today, right, we came right up, right to the upper edge of it. And oh, we actually were failing right now, okay? It ain't over. The volatility, okay, this little volatility box, this thing is not over. Three weeks inside of the exact same 100-point range, all right, sitting on a uh, on a 20, 21 VIX, you got trouble right ahead of you, and you better be aware of it. And again, I like to tell you, when I say be careful with your allocations, this is where I'm very fond of saying I don't care whether you're bullish or bearish because, yeah, people are going to like claim victory is mine because I'm bullish and we actually went up, or victory is mine and I'm bearish. I have longer duration bearish positions on. I don't mind saying that. If we explode to the upside, so be it. I'll go out and sell some premium. The premium sellers are the ones who are actually going to uh, to do well in this. Okay, Everybody else, they're going to get chewed up. I mean, basically, there's the closing bell. Okay, It is over. First trading week of the year is in the books. We're going to end all mildly higher. Anyway, okay, this is where people get really ground apart in these volatility boxes because they just don't recognize what they're in. And I am emphasizing it and overemphasizing it simply because, you know, I'm, I'm just, it's painful to watch when people go, yeah, you know, uh, this marketplace should be really, really bearish right up until the point it explodes in your face. Okay, if you're going to take positions right now, bullish or bearish, okay, one of two things, you either sell out of the money premium. I don't mind saying, okay, I sold this week. Some, uh, well, here, you want to see exactly what I sold this week? I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But I sold some uh, some 4,400 calls. I, in fact, I even did some stuff over in the uh, Zaba portfolio, not too, uh, not too far apart from that. I also sold some 445s okay, out there. Uh, again, if we rally and rally huge, eh, so be it. You know, these, these 445s, they're, they're more than a hop, skip, and a jump out of the money. I'll be just fine. Like, I'll live to tell the story. But yeah, when I'm talking about 445, like, or these 4400s, that's up here. <laughs> like, yes, that's all the way up here. I think I'll be probably okay. Nevertheless, you got to be careful with your allocations. If you get very, very biased, if you know you're a very biased individual, put yourself in check now. That's the biggest takeaway for this next week of trade, especially when, you know, 25 years behind the screen. And I'm telling you, trade right now is sketchy. It's fast. It's broken. It's disconnected. If you think you have a good feel, think again. Next on the docket as we do each and every weekend, get your trade on this week's profits and losses. I've been covering some short premium. Okay. Well, specifically here inside of the S and P's, it's a couple things I did. In fact, here, I'll just show you my, uh, my order book for today. I didn't trade all that much today. Why? Because it's fast and it's sketchy. <laughs> like, what else do you need to hear? Trades fast and sketchy. What I did do is I uh, I bought back some S&P uh, puts, 
Okay, so I bought back some puts, these 30, 50 puts. I bought them back for like uh, 9.25. In fact, you know, the more I think about it, I have a few more puts on. Look at these. Those are up 42%. Uh, those are right on the dance floor to be closed. So I closed some stuff this week for 50% gains. All right, that's covering short premium for 50%. Then I went out and actually did a catapult spread. For those of you that do not know what the catapult spread, okay, catapult basically goes out there and, uh, well, here, I'll just show you exactly what it looks like. So if I go over to Target, okay, Target had a uh, blistering up move today and I took advantage of it. What I actually did is I went out and purchased an out of the money, again, an out of the money put spread. Now, an out of the money put spread seeks for a wicked move uh, back down, right? So I'm looking for this, this violent move back down. How far do we have to go back down for me to be fully profitable? You got to get basically down to like 135, like 130, right? That's, that's off the screen. Okay, so what I'm actually looking for is us to break the range on target to the downside. Now, if you think about that, you're like, that's never going to happen, Don. We're not going to do that. It's a low probability trade. Yes, I'd like to do voices on here too. But if you think about that, you're, you're probably right. So what I did is turned around and then financed the target spread by selling a way out of the money put inside of the S&Ps. So the out of the money put has like a 95% chance of making money. Those puts that I'm selling in the S&Ps finance the target trade. If, if you think, what happens if the market crashes? Well, if the market crashes and the S&Ps get hit, don't worry, the target trade's actually gonna make money, okay? And that target trade's gonna make me a lot of money, more than enough to actually cover any of the losses in the S&Ps. So welcome to Catapult. Oh, last on the list over here is I actually put on some inflection point spread specifically into the uh, into the micros. So this is actually what we call the Theo Theta small portfolio. In the Theo Theta small portfolio, we take a very, very minute allocation. This is actually to teach people a little bit, of course, about selling premium. You want to talk about minute allocation? This trade ties up $1,127. That is in an IRA. It would tie up only about $600 inside of a Reg T margin account. Anybody, anybody with $2,000 inside of a marginable brokerage account can do this trade. And this is actually um, an inflection point spread. It's the sale of premium, uh, very similar to what I'm doing in the catapult, but uh, with a tremendous amount less margin. Okay, it's way less margin. I've had to have $600 in margin on an inflection point spread. That's the reason I'm showing you. All right, last thing I like to do on each and every weekend update is to give you a little bit about expected move. When we talk about expected move, we go to the mother of all products. It's the SPX. Now, the SPX, ooh, look at this, okay? We've now had two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row, we, were, we did not, did not tag the upper or lower edge of the expected move in the last two weeks. So this past week of trade had an $84 expected move. What that basically means is we were looking for a move $84 higher, or $84 lower. Now we moved today. Obviously we moved $84 just today. Nevertheless, we never actually hit the upper or lower edge of the expected move. What are we looking at next week? Now I wanted to make a very, very key distinction. This, this week of trade had four days. Monday, we were closed, right, for New Year holiday. Next week, next week we're actually going to have a, a full five-day uh, five trading week, ironically going back into another four-day trading week, but that's neither here nor there. So uh, January 13th, that's seven days out. What are we looking at? Almost, almost $100 expected move. So once again, eh, listen, put on your big boy pants because we're going in. The volatility isn't going away. You know, I was I was looking at the uh, the video here, and I'm like, more bull or prepare for the bear? The answer is yes. Okay, but just the the bottom line with this marketplace, and I want to leave you with this. Okay, not only not only hasn't hasn't volatility abated thus far in 2023, or a whole four days into it, we're rocking right now, and you just better be aware of it. Okay, hands and feet inside of the vehicle. Try not to get too wicked and directional right now. This is a marketplace that it has the ability, okay? And it's already leaning a little bit towards the upside. You can't be surprised to see this wild, you know, rip to the upside. But I'm gonna tell you, okay, whew, some, of the, uh, some of the late breaking news and every data drop that we're getting, some fairly negative data that's coming out. Now that negative data might initially, okay, spark a rally. Nevertheless, okay, you're gonna have your work cut out for you. Look, you're in a short squeeze today. Is it gonna continue into early next week? Watch the 39.31 level. If we can get above 
Okay, that 3931, I say above it, like you got to get all the way up to like 3950. You get north of it, you got a pretty rip and rally on your hands. Right now, though, we missed it. We faded. Okay, this is going to be some critical trade in the days to come. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.